I would like to see your opinions from the press release that you have on the des that we have on the Destiny Breast Overnight, and how do you think that will impact the clinical practice? Yeah, I mean, one of the really exciting presentations that uh, we have at this year's ASCA for breast cancer, I don't think we've ever had as many potentially practice-changing um, presentations, and DB09, hotly waited for, but I think the results are no surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, trastuzumab directs to counter TDXD, superior to TDM1, superior to third line therapy with a uh, capecitabine, either TKI or trastuzumab backbone. So, you know, it made sense that it was going to be superior to first line chemotherapy. I think there's a lot of questions about sequencing ADCs. Mm -hmm. TDXD was superior to THP, mm -hmm. but the trial itself said you could stop the T, the taxane, after some number of, you know, six to eight cycles of chemotherapy, whereas you continue the chemo exposure with TDXD. So there's that question about, was it because you stopped the taxane? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's probably based on the data we have more that you continue to be able to effectively treat disease that becomes resistant more rapidly with the THP. So I think that it leaves us with a question. So around the world, TDXD is more expensive than THP. You have to monitor for interstitial lung disease. So there may be a tendency to wait in some patients around the world until we have a little bit more data. But in the US, I think people are very interested in trying to get the best response that lasts the most. So then our question is gonna be, what do you do with that? Do you continue TDXD for five years? Do you stop, change to HB? give hormone therapy, palbociclib like patina. Yes. So well, I think we're going to have to wait and see. I think that uh, patient-reported outcomes, looking to see what happens over time, will help us a lot in understanding how to put this into our clinical practice. But these advances are all really important.